Hi, everybody. Thanks for hopping on and um, joining me tonight for an all levels class. Um, we'll do a flow class kind of focused on some hip openers, um, a little bit of balance. We shouldn't need any special props. If you have a block at home um, or something like a block, like a stack of books or something that you'd like to use, um, you may want that for some of our balance poses, but besides that, nothing else necessary. We'll go ahead and get started here in just a few moments. Give anybody else some time to hop on. And we're going to start standing today. So if you're seated, you can go ahead and make your way to your feet. We're just going to get started in a standing mountain pose or Tadasana. So allow the palms to face forward. Draw the shoulders down and away from the ears as you lengthen through the spine and through the neck. You can let the eyes close if that feels comfortable. really root down through all four corners of each foot. Pull the belly in and keep the abs tight. Begin to turn your awareness inward. Notice your breath, maybe your heart rate, Notice any thoughts or any feelings that are coming up right here, right in this moment. There's no need to change anything or judge anything. Just notice right where you are right now. As we move through our postures and through our practice today, allow yourself to be an observer to these thoughts, these emotions, anything that comes up. Try not to make judgments. Try not to change anything. And just allow yourself to be. Take one more deep breath here in your mountain pose. Inhaling, filling up the belly. And then on an exhale, let it all out. With your next breath in, sweep the hands up overhead and bring the fingertips to touch at the top. Start to press the hips forward as you take a gentle back bend here. Opening up through the heart and through the chest. Exhale, allow the hands to come back down and interlace the fingertips right at the low back. Press the shoulder blades together as you continue to open the heart space. Keeping the hands interlaced, bring both hands over to the left hip and then press into that hip as you take your gaze right for your spinal twist. Keep the feet and the hips rooted and squared towards the front of your mat. Exhale, release, and then take the hands over to the opposite hip, taking your spinal twist to the other side. Exhale, back to center, release the fingertips, inhale, reach up. Sweep the fingertips up and then we'll take a side stretch to the right, opening up through the left side body. Keep that shoulder spiraling open. Exhale back to center, allow the palms to face forward and take another mini back bend here, opening through the whole front of the body. Inhale back to that neutral spine and then take your side stretch to the left. 
Good, inhale back up to center, and then swan dive down, gently bending at the knees all the way down to your forward fold. Take a moment here, maybe bend one, any tension in the low back to release here. As you breathe your next breath in, start to roll up super slow, one vertebrae at a time, making your way back up to a standing mountain pose. But take your time getting there, there's no rush. When you make it to the top, we'll sweep the arms up overhead again. And we're gonna do that two more times. So exhale, swan dive down, soften at the knees, let the head hang heavy. Inhale, roll it up. Really let the arms hang down heavy here and feel every muscle in your back engaging. One more time, inhale. Exhale to your forward fold. One breath here and then slowly roll it up. Good. Come back into that Tadasana, that mountain pose for one breath, one full inhale and full exhale. If you have an intention that you'd like to set for your practice, go ahead and bring one to mind now. Good, when we're ready, we'll inhale the arms up one more time, coming back into that forward fold, and then stepping right back into a downward facing dog. So planting the hands at the top of the mat, about shoulder width apart, fingertips are spread wide. Allow the knees to be soft. Press the heart back towards the thighs. You can find some movement here, maybe bending one knee and then the other, maybe shaking the head out, yes or no. Working out any kinks, working out any feelings. With the next breath, we'll sweep the left heel up high, coming into a three-legged dog. So really drive back through that left heel, pressing into an imaginary wall behind you. That left leg stays straight and the hip stays square to the ground. On an exhale, start to bend that left knee and draw the knee to the outside of the left elbow. So the same side, pausing here, and then come back into that three-legged dog, driving the heel back. On the next breath, bend the knee, and this time step that left foot between the hands. The back foot comes down to a 45 degree angle. Come up into your warrior one. Inhale the arms up overhead. Take just a few moments here, allowing the hips to sink down. Make sure you're at about a 90 degree angle with that front knee. Inhale, reach up through those fingertips, lengthen through the spine, and then exhale, open to your warrior two. So that back foot is now at a 90 degree angle and arms are reaching out long in front. Gaze right over that middle fingertip. Notice here that back hip is spiraling open. Exhale, come into your side angle pose. So the left forearm, comes down to meet the thigh as you reach up with the right fingertip. You may stay here, or if you'd like a bit of a deeper stretch, you can even bring those left fingertips down to the inside of the foot. If you have a bind here, and you'd like to wrap that bottom arm behind the thigh, you can take the bind. Inhale, sweep back up into your warrior two, and then right into reverse warrior. Reach back through the left fingertips, open the side body, keep the shoulder spiraling open. Inhale up to your warrior two, 
and then start to shift the weight into that front leg. We're gonna reach forward and come into our half moon. So the left fingertips reach for the corner of the mat as the back leg lifts, and we find a hip opener here in our half moon. This is where you can use a block or a stack of books or anything to kind of bring that ground closer to you if you need it. Exhale, go ahead and release into a forward fold here. Take a rag doll, allow the hands to find opposite elbows as that upper body hangs heavy. Plant the hands at the top of the mat and step back into your high plank or high push-up position. Hold here for just one breath, full inhale, full exhale, feeling strong in your core. And then lower down to the ground in any way that you'd like to. You can take a knees, chest, chin, or take a chaturanga. We're all going to come into a cobra, lifting the heart. And then exhale our way back into that downward facing dog. Preparing now for the right side. So inhale, lifting the right heel for three-legged dog. Spend a few breaths here, really lengthening all the way from the right fingertips to the right heel. One long line of energy. On an exhale, start to draw that right knee to the outside of the right elbow and pause, hover here. Exhale, send it back, three-legged dog. This time, step that right foot all the way to the top of the mat between the right hands as you open up for your warrior one. Back foot is at a 45 degree angle. Find your breath here. Find your foundation. And when you're ready, exhale, open, warrior two. Back hip is pulling open. On the next breath, come into that side angle pose, drawing the right elbow down to the thigh, reaching up with the left fingertips. Again, option to deepen that pose and maybe even taking a bind if you have it in your practice. Inhale, make your way back into your warrior two and right into your reverse warrior. Inhale, back up and prepare for your half moon. So start to shift that weight forward into the front leg as the back toes lift, reaching for the corner of the mat with the front fingertips. The back foot stays flexed and you stay open through the chest and through the heart here. One more breath here, focusing your gaze on one unmoving point, and then exhale, release it into your forward fold. Maybe find a rag doll, or this time a gorilla pose by bringing the palms underneath the balls of the feet. One more breath here. And then we'll step one foot towards the back of the mat, just setting up for a wide-legged forward fold. So both feet face the long edge of the mat this time, and you can adjust the length of um, your stance, whatever feels good for you. Once you have the feet set, go ahead and let that upper body drop down, draw the crown down towards the mat for your wide-legged fold. Begin to lift the heart, coming all the way up to the top, and we'll bring the feet in so that they're 
just wider than hips width distance. The toes are pointing out at about a 45 degree angle. You can keep the hands on the hips here. We're gonna start to lower down into our malasana or our goddess squat. So imagine that you're sliding down a wall behind you, keeping the spine straight as you drop the sit bones down. A pretty intense hip opener here. You can use the elbows to press the knees away and deepen this posture a little more. So we're gonna find a little bit of movement here with our next few breaths. As you inhale, imagine the spine lengthening. Exhale, draw the crown down towards the mat. Lift the tailbone back into your wide-legged forward fold. Inhale, sink the hip bones down. Lift the crown back into your malasana goddess squat. Take a few more just like that, allowing your breath to guide you. So one breath, one movement. In one movement, you're dropping the sit bones and lifting the crown. And with the next, you're dropping the crown and lifting the sit bones. Really getting into the thighs here. Let's do one more. Inhale, drop the sits bones, lift the crown, and exhale back into that wide-legged forward fold. The next time you're here in a wide-legged fold, go ahead and hang out here for a few moments. We'll walk the fingertips over to the right foot and draw the nose towards the right knee. Exhale, walk the fingertips back through center and then over to the left side. Good, back to center and then heel toe the feet back together. We're going to step back into our downward facing dog from here. Notice if maybe this down dog feels any differently from the first one in class today. With the next breath, inhale the left foot high, left heel high for three-legged dog. And then on an exhale, draw that foot through and set up for your pigeon pose on the left. So we'll lay that shin, that left shin, kind of across the front of the mat. The angle of the leg will be a little bit different for everyone, but we want to stay kind of upright, keeping the hips square. Check back with the back leg, make sure it's parallel with the mat. If this feels uncomfortable for you, you can also take pigeon on your back by crossing that ankle over the knee and then pulling that thigh in towards the chest. If you have the traditional pigeon though, and you'd like to further the pose, you can hinge forward at the hips and maybe bring the forearms down to the mat. Try to relax the neck. Take just a few more breaths here. And when you're ready, beginning to lift the heart, planting the hands at the top of the mat, 
tuck the back toe under and prepare to come back into that three-legged dog. So the left heel goes high. This time maybe bend the knee and open up that hip, keeping the shoulder square. Exhale back into your downward facing dog. Take a moment here to reset, readjust. And then when you're ready, lifting the right heel and preparing for pigeon on the right side. So exhale, drawing the knee in towards the chest. Laying that lower half of the leg across the mat. Checking in with the hips. Putting the support underneath this right hip if you need it, like a blanket or a towel or a block. And then when and if you would like to hinge forward, you can go ahead and move that heart space down towards the mat. Maybe you notice your breath flowing. Maybe you notice the mind settling a bit here as we slow it down. Begin to lift the heart back upright, planting the hands at the top of the mat and making your way into that three-legged dog, bending the knee and opening up the hip on this side. Exhale, return to your downward facing dog and then walk the hands back towards the feet. One breath here in your forward fold, softening at the knees. And then start to sink the hip bones down, coming into a seated position. We'll go ahead and find um, a cross-legged seat. So move any flesh out of the way, make sure the sit bones are rooted down into the mat. And then as you inhale, bring the arms up overhead. Exhale, take a forward fold here. Walk the fingertips out in front and let the heart sink down. And walk the fingertips back in towards the body. And then switch legs so that the opposite leg is in front this time. Same thing on this side. Inhale, lift the fingertips. And then exhale, hinge at the hips. Walk those fingers out in front. Inhale, come back upright. We'll bring the feet out in front, allowing the bottoms of the feet to come together. Make sure you have some room behind you. We're gonna slowly lower it down to the mat, coming into our reclined bound angle pose. So keep the bottoms of the feet pressing together and allow the legs, excuse me, the knees to fall out to either side. If you'd like um, pillows or blocks underneath the thighs, that can make this a more supportive pose. So 
allow the whole back body to press into the mat as we let gravity do the work here in this pose. Bring the fingertips to the outsides of the legs and gently guide the knees together. Plant the feet on top of the mat and take the knees from side to side for a few windshield wipers. We'll keep the feet planted here, maybe inching them a little bit closer to the sits bones allowing the hands to lengthen out next to the body as though the fingertips can almost touch the heels. We're going to prepare for a few rounds of bridge pose. So when you're ready, press into the heels, into the arms, and inhale, lift the hips. Really allow the thighs to do the work here rather than the glutes. Exhale, sink it back down to the mat. We'll take two more rounds. Inhale, pressing in, lifting the hips up. Staying with your breath here at the top. And exhale, release. For this last round, if you have wheel pose in your practice and you'd prefer to take a wheel, you're more than welcome to do so. When you're ready for this last round, go ahead and press in, inhale and lift. Last breath and release it back down to the mat. Draw the knees in towards the chest, giving them a nice squeeze. Let's drop the knees over to the right side, coming into a spinal twist, maybe extending the opposite arm out long into a T and gazing over in that direction. Inhale, draw the knees back to center, and then drop them over to the opposite side. Maybe gazing out in the direction of the opposite fingertips to deepen that twist. Keeping both shoulders pressing into the mat. Inhale back to center. Guide the fingertips to the outer edges of each foot and find your happy baby pose. Maybe taking some movements from side to side. If there's any other postures or movements that your body is craving right now, 
take a moment to honor that. Maybe a leg's up the wall. Um, maybe a few more twists. Maybe a full body stretch from head to toe. Whatever you feel like you may be in need of this evening. Once you've honored that movement, we'll allow the heels to stretch out long on the mat, allowing the arms to rest down by the side body as we relax into our Shavasana. Start to bring awareness back into the body. Taking some gentle movements of the fingers and then toes. And maybe reaching the hands up overhead and lengthening for a full body stretch. Make your way over onto one side of the body. Pausing here for a moment. And then in your own time, coming up into a seated position. We'll bring the hands together at heart center. And to close out our practice tonight, we'll bow and say namaste. Thank you guys for joining me. I hope your hips feel happier after this. Have a good rest of your night.